Today we're replacing the CDI box on a 1997 Yamaha Wave Raider Wave Runner. This is a 701 engine. It's a 61X model, although I believe this procedure is probably very standard on all the different 701 models. The symptoms we were having was the Wave Runner would actually run full blast, everything was fine, and then all of a sudden, just on a snap, it would just stop running. Now, I'm not talking about a slow, it's like, you know, like zero starts slowing down. I'm saying like it's just wide open, it just stops, and it just coasts to a stop. And it would sit there, you couldn't start it for a little bit, then all of a sudden it would start. And it seemed to be very intermittent. Knowing a little bit about these jet skis, that's an electrical issue, you know, when it just stops immediately. It's a little hard to diagnose a lot of these electrical components in these systems. Now that they have so many aftermarket, you know, parts that are not that expensive, a lot of times it's just easier just to start replacing parts and hope that you hit the right one, over taking it to a shop and the service charge is, you know, more the cost of all the parts you need to begin with. In general, you have a CDI box, which is located back here in this electric box. There's also a rectifier and a solenoid inside there. Um, the rectifier is really more for the charging system, and the CDI, CDI box will be part of the spark for the spark plugs. You also have some electrical components up here in the front that are underneath the flywheel, and those also affect the spark. But I think it's more common that your CDI box will go out, you know, before these other parts will. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and replace the CDI box and see if that resolves the problem on this jet ski. First thing you're going to need to do is go ahead and remove your battery. After removing the battery, there's three stainless steel nuts that are 12 millimeters. You take these out and that will actually release your power box that's on the back side of the firewall. Once you've gotten the three bolts out of the electric box, these battery leads will actually pull right out of the battery case. And that gives you the access that you can actually lift this thing up and get a little bit better access to the back of it. Hey, we'll be back in a little over 60 seconds and we're going to pause real quick to see if you need any eternal repair. You might say, eternal repair? What's that? Well, hey, consider your whole life and all your life. Have you ever told a lie before? I have and I'm sure you have too. We all have. Also consider, have you ever stolen something even no matter how small it was? I'm sure you have and I have too. The whole point of where I'm going with this is those two rules, lying and stealing, those are two of the Ten Commandments in the Bible for which define what sin is. So if you've broken even one of those rules, no matter how small it was, that means you've sinned, and we all have. The punishment for sin is going to hell, or eternal separation from God. The good news is Jesus Christ came to this earth. He didn't lie. He didn't steal. He didn't do all these crazy stuff that you and I have done. He was totally without sin. He was sacrificed on the cross for my personal sin and yours. He went to the grave. Three days later, he defeated death, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross was he was taking the punishment for your sin and for my sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was, what he did, you submit to him as your Lord, and you repent. And when you do that, you can have eternal habitation with Jesus and the rest of the saints for eternity in heaven. You might be saying to yourself, hey, I'm a good person. Surely God wouldn't send me to hell for all the nice things I've done for people. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says, by grace you can save through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man or woman should boast. There is no amount of good work you can do to earn your righteousness before God. Only faith and trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. Hey, let's get back to our video, and I'll have a little more information on the eternal portion of this at the end of the video. There's 14 stainless steel Phillips head screws in the back, so go ahead and spin these out. These screws are going into plastic, so they are not machine thread. They're actually kind of more like a wood thread. Okay, once you've taken the two bolts out, now your CDI unit will actually just lift right out of here. And there's actually seven wires that are on the back of these things. You have your pink, your brown, your white with red stripe, uh, two blacks, one of them having a hoop, an orange, and a white. And they have these waterproof connectors. And you can just pull these connectors apart, just like that. And your last black one with the hoop is going to be grounded on this screw right here. All the screws in the CDI box are a larger Phillips head size than your standard Phillips head. Okay, so there's the old one. That's just how easy it was. Kind of inspecting the back side of it, I don't see anything that's burnt. A lot of times on these electrical parts, while there are kind of complicated ways of testing them, for the cost of these aftermarket parts, sometimes it's easier just to go ahead and buy one and just give it a try and see if it works. One thing I'm going to do while I'm in here, I got my own meter. You can, you can see how the needle raises when I touch these contacts together. I'm going to reach over the back side of this and I'm going to touch it to the negative battery lead 
right here behind this voltmeter. And then I'll come through and just touch these grounds right here, just to make sure that everything is getting a ground like it should be. And that'll just kind of proof out that it's not a grounding issue with my problems with the ignition. To install my new CDI, we'll just simply just reverse order and we'll go ahead and rehook up all these connectors. They got these little plastic sleeves that you slide back over to keep a good corrosion free connection. There's also a fuse in here that you might as well check while you have this thing open. You just pull it out, you have your ohm meter, put it on both sides, and there you go. When you're putting it back together, make sure this rubber seal is actually lining up with all the holes. It has a tendency to want to get pushed too far out or whatnot, but as long as the holes line up, then you're in good shape. And I'll tell you, the biggest challenge of this job is getting all those wires packed back in there and being able to get the bolts down this cover and crank it down and being able to stretch the wires long enough to reach all these different domed rubber pieces that make up part of the cover. So I'd highlight five, as soon as you take this cover off, take a snapshot of it so you can see how all the wires were laid out to be able to make all of this stuff reach, you know, the different places where it's supposed to come out of this box. One possibility before you conclude a CDI unit is bad is you should check out the stop switch. The start and stop switch notoriously has a lot of issues where underneath these buttons, if you take this thing apart, there's a rubber protective boot underneath these buttons and a lot of times that rubber boot will break and it'll get water inside either of these two buttons. You can actually take this piece apart and disassemble it and put some electrical grease on it and get it working again. However, it doesn't take very long before it goes bad again and you have to do the process over. The way you can prove it out to see if this stop button is actually going defective is go ahead and open up the hood and the wires that are going up through the steering column, there's going to be two two-wire plugs. One of them is going to be a red and brown plug. That's the one that works the starter button. And the other is going to be a black and white plug. This is the one that shuts down the CDI unit and the spark. There's a button just under the collar here. If you push that button down and pull, this will separate. Effectively, what you just did is you bypass the stop button. Now go and try and start your jet ski. And if it starts and runs fine with this disconnected, then the probability is, is that you have a bad kill switch. If it does start and you can plug this back in and it immediately stops, then you know you've found your problem. Remember, if you do disconnect this plug and try to run it in the lake while the plug is disconnected, the stop switch will no longer work. So your alternative way to stop the jet ski would be to either pull the choke out or to turn the fuel selector switch off so that it will run itself out of gas. Hey, as far as the eternal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure you know who God is, I encourage you to just to pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, if you are real and you are out there, I pray you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that prayer, he's going to answer it and you will know he is real. At the point you know he is real and you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is so simple. All you have to do is just pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God. You took the price for my personal sin on the cross. I surrender my will to your will as Lord of my life. I repent of my sin. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me into your eternal habitation. That's just how simple it is. But the catch is that just saying those words won't do anything for you, only unless the heart believes the words that you're speaking. For the Bible says in Romans 10:9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. Hey, if you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot more information about your walk with Jesus Christ. That's eternalrepair.com. Thanks for watching.